I need these for all of these. <laughs> So to do this the easy way, we're going to start with uh, 80 grams and do 10% batches. In order to do that, you need 12 grams of powder in your baggie. If the baggie weighs 13 to 15 grams, then you're going to have plenty to start with 10%. But if the baggie doesn't weigh that much, then you're going to have to start with 15%. And we'll get to that in a little while. 80 grams is a good place to start uh, when you're doing 10% first. Obviously, you can do 100 gram batches. You're going to have a little left over at that point. Um, and that's going to tempt somebody like me to use it before I know if it's going to work. So, <laughs> use your own discretion. <laughs> I'm doing this in the standard pottery math method where you take 100% of your base and then add 10% of your colorant, which means I'm adding 8 grams of colorant to this 80 gram batch. Super simple. But before we get too far along, if you have not seen the previous video I did on colored clay, then be aware that colored clay can go very wrong. Like, lose weeks of work kind of wrong. So I have linked that video in the cards and you can access it from the video description. It will tell you all you need to know about what colors to buy and where I got all these super sample packs that we're testing today. As I mix up these batches and move these colors onto plaster, let me tell you, no matter how well you mix, you will still have some wedging to do. The ram's head method is not going to be effective in this case. So here's a quick tip for wedging tiny amounts of clay. So I'm gonna roll it. I'm gonna flatten it. I'm going to fold it, fold it again, fold it again, and swirl it. I can't really show you here, but this really is actually creating a swirl. And bubbles are popping around the outside edge of this piece of clay. Ta-da! All done. Completely and totally even. No rams and ball. Now for the test tile. I have made mine 10 centimeters long. Because 10 centimeters is also 100 millimeters, I can easily test to see if the colorant in any way affects the shrinkage rate. I would not expect this to happen. However, it's an easy standard. And should I in the future start using raw materials to stain clay, some of those might definitely change the properties of the clay itself. So I feel like it's a good idea just to start doing that now. After all this, I need to take the leftover clay and dry it out again. I do this in my kitchen oven. That video is probably one of my most popular ones right now, and I have it linked in the cards as well. Since that video, I have found that this old pizza rack Gives me nice circulation of air in the oven, as well as support for the clay. So for all of the baggies that weigh less than 13 grams, meaning they only have 12 grams or less in them, you are going to have to start with 15%. And you're going to weigh out a 60 gram batch and put nine grams of powder in it because nine is 15% of 60. So you'll have a total amount of 69 grams. Some people like to put their powder into wet clay and then wedge it. I, I like drying my clay out and then slaking it down. I feel like it's easier to mix up with a spatula and lay it out on plaster than it is to wedge the dry powder into wet clay. But if that's your jam, go for it. 
Keep in mind, however, that you will get different colors from the same weights doing it that way, unless you take into account the weight of water in wet clay. Also, in large batches, you will have a lot more wedging to do for an even color. So, you know, you do you. Now back to the tile. I punch a hole in the end of each tile so that I can tie them together with twine and keep all of the samples of a specific clay body together easily. On each tile, I notate the manufacturer's number, the proper name of the color, the name of the clay I've mixed it into, the cone I plan to fire the tile to, and the percentage of the colorant that I've added. Then back into the oven with the leftovers so that we can get the dry weight amount and adjust the amount of colorant for the other two tiles. So I just got these out of the oven. Okay, they've been out of the oven for a while now. So my test tiles weigh 25 grams, which means that on these, that we started with 80 grams, I need to split these into two pieces. Now the piece that gets the 5% batch will have double the amount of clay in it. So if it's real tiny, that's fine. But the piece that has 15% um, will not get any more clay. It will only get more colorant. So I need to make sure that at least 30 grams or more finds its way into both of those halves. So the 5% half can be 15 grams because it's gonna get double the amount of clay, but the 15% batch needs at least 30 grams of this that is dry in order to um, make the 15% test tile. This calculator.net is the niftiest nifty percentage calculator that I've been able to find. It gives us this nifty little platform here and says, if you fill in the two of these options, I will take care of the third. Yes! Thank you! <laughs> uh, so there's a couple of things that we need to know in order to figure out the percentage of colorant that is in said sample and then recalculate that to be the, the percentage that we want. Because 10 is not 10% of 110. So right here, I have put 110 and 100, calculate, and it gives me 90.9. So that actually means that 100 is 90.9. 9% of 110. So if I subtract 90.9 .9 from 100, I get 9.1, and that is how much 10 of 110 is. It also gives us this nifty little calculator here at the bottom. It's percentage difference, and you can put the same thing in that, and it gives you two different numbers, depending on what's in the top slot. So it says the difference is 9.52, but 110 is a 10% increase of 100. Well, I want to know what the decrease is. So if I flip these around, and put the bigger number on top, it gives me the same 9.52, but it gives me this. 100 is 9.09, 9.1 basically, a decrease of 110. So be careful with that one because I did some test tiles at 9.52%. I'm not all that concerned about it but it's not absolutely correct either. <laughs> Nothing in my studio is absolutely correct. <laughs> ah, sometimes that's what makes it fun. So now look at what our sample weighs. And this one weighs 38.25. 
38.25 minus 9.1%. 34.7692. 34.7692. Plus 15%. 39.9855. 40. 40. I'm going to add colorant. Until that adds up to 40. Now, if I were to make a mold of my test tile, then I could simply put the percentage into 25 grams of clay and press it into the mold. But I kind of feel like coloring extra clay makes the process easier, plus gives me just enough to play with after I see the results. But I have been an idiot before and you have always felt free to tell me in the comments. So go ahead. <laughs> One of the cool things about starting with 10% is that, see all that colorant in the bottom? I know this is the 15% batch, even though it's not labeled yet because I added colorant to it and not clay. So that key help, helps to keep things from getting too far out of hand sometimes. Not that it's ever gotten too far out of hand in this studio. <laughs> or maybe it does that every week. Now I have 18 grams left over of that same color. And I'm going to get a 5% sample out of this when it's already at 10%. So, 18 minus 9.5%. It's 16.29. 16.29 times 2. The answer is 32.58. 32 and a half. Now, even if you do your tiles separately or in a mold, this process is still valid. This works with any amount of clay. Just subtract the current percentage of colorant and add colorant or clay to change it. So I expect this process to be very useful in the future for those times when I am ready to build with the colors, but I have not planned ahead and made all the colors because you know that's gonna happen. <laughs> In that case, I can immediately increase the amount of clay I have to build with by diluting the color just a little bit, as you see me doing oh, here. That one's done. The other great thing about doing them in 10% batches is that you mix the 10% batch and then you stand over here and you mix both the five and the 15% batch. Whereas if you start with 15%, you've got to uh, make the 15% test tile, come over here, mix the 10% test tile, go make the 10% test tile, come back over here and mix the 5% test tile. Um, so it's kind of a smoother transition from doing all your mixing and then doing all your test tiles. I will say this in favor of starting with 15%. In my test tile, I can get all three test tiles made in nine grams of colorant. And at the end of making those tiles, I'm only left with a small amount of leftover clay at 5%. So it uses less clay, less colorant, leaves only one color left over. So this is how I do that. These are the 15% batches, the ones that did not have enough powder in the baggie to start with a 10% batch. So here we go. Those are my two values. 86.9, 100 minus 86.95. It's 13.05. 13.05. Will give us a 15% a batch. And I can check that by saying 115 minus 13.05%. 99.9925. Fantastic. This has 15% or 13.05%. It weighs 38.5 grams. 13.05%. And the weight, 5.02 grams of this 
is the colorant powder. Because it's 10%, I can do that in my head. 5.02, move the decibel, 50.2, add in 5.2, I get 55. But if I use my little doodad here, same thing, I'm gonna change the percentage to get me a 10% batch, which would be 9.1, 9.1% of what number? Because I want the new weight is 5.02, calculate, and we get 55. I'm going to add clay to this until it weighs 55. So now 55, I move this, and that gives me a 10%. So I, I highly recommend you keep all your 15% batches together and all your 10% batches. Because if you come out here on two different days, then you have to wrap your hand, head around it all over again, and it is not fun. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> and again, with the test tiles, I found that some of the names of some of the colorants were almost too long to fit on the 10 centimeter test tile when the hole was punched in the end of it. But the sharpness of the tool you use to do the writing will determine how many letters will fit. I was using the end of a skewer that was pretty dull, so if you run into trouble, use a sharper tool or wait until the tile is more dry than wet to do all the writing. And finally, we have come to the glazing. I plan to single fire these because I am only painting one half of one side with a thin clear glaze. I single fired the first tests that I did, and it worked out great. I would not single fire if I were going to coat the entire test tile with a glaze. So yesterday I laid all these out and realized that I only have four shelves in my baby kiln. And even if I use all four shelves, they won't all fit. And I broke one of these, so I have to make a new one. Of that one. So since I'm gonna have to fire them in my big kiln and I had to remake one I thought well why not make six more? Look they're so pretty! I love them. I love them all. <laughs> Where do I start? Apparently uh, the names of these mean nothing. Red is a good name for this red, right? That's just red. And it's quite versatile. This was probably the widest spread. You've got a really good range of colors with this red. This red is a really good strong red. Uh, definitely stronger than say strong red. This is right here. Watermelon, strawberry, those are much more intense than the red. But intensive red it's not really red. It's really more of a salmon. And salmon is really more of an orange. Bright red. They're all very pretty. Uh, lava. And it just kind of depends on what you're making. Deep red is very mauve and kind of understated. I love it. It's Bordeaux red is really just pink. It's not really red. It's just pink. Beautiful, beautiful pinks. Like I'm going to have to have some of this. Red maroon, another really, really good red. 
Uh, I like them all, honestly, for what they are. And it just kind of depends on what you're making. But versatility wise, I would definitely just go with red. Um, because I think it gave the largest spread overall of the different colors. The oranges, however, each color is different. Um, the mandarin, the 10 and 15% are virtually the same, but each color is different. It's a good color spread. Yellows, the tiles are completely indistinguishable in the mango. They all look exactly the same, except for maybe what shelf they will, were fired on. I, so there's really, that's good for me. That means I won't have to use as much stain. So yellow will be cheap. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing a lot of yellow uh, fairy house flowers in my future. <laughs> What's interesting about the lemon is that these two are virtually indistinguishable and these two are virtually indistinguishable. This is two and a half percent and 5% on the yellow, and then the 10 and the 15% on the yellow. So I thought that was interesting. So lime and green, you can't go wrong with either one of these. You do get a more intense green with the green, um, but you get a lighter lime with the lime. Uh, I don't think you'd have to have both of these necessarily, but really interesting, the 5% of the lime and the 2.5% of the green are almost exactly the same. The blues are fantastic. Uh, this is delphinium blue. It's a really good basic blue. Love it. Again, though, 10 and 15%, totally exactly the same and mazarin as well. This is mazarin blue, 10 and 15% exactly the same. So no reason to go beyond 10% on either of the blues. The mazarin is quite denim, very, very denim. The only one that really just flat out did not work out is the violet. It's still just the same color as your normal everyday Sharpie. So it's gray. If you need a gray, I would suggest violet. <laughs> but I have had somebody tell me before that purple in colored clay was the bane of her existence. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, she has a kiln like mine. Clearly though, this came out violet in somebody else's kiln or they wouldn't be selling it as violet. They'd be selling it as gray. So yet again, don't take my word for it. Do your own testing. Test, test, test. Because like I said, as far as I'm concerned, the names of all these mean nothing. I would not call this intensive red in any shape, form, or fashion, but somebody felt like, felt like that was a good name for it. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get these on some fairy houses and on some flowers and on some mugs and on all the things. So thanks for coming, everybody. I hope this was helpful in some way, if not just the vast amount of work that I go through to make you beautiful things. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a great week. Phew, that was a lot. Like three months worth of a lot. And trust me, it was not without its blunders. And at minus 10%, no. The answer is 16 points. Sorry, math. Bucket. No clean buckets. This is my studio. Why would I expect there to be a clean bucket? That meant.
that means I would have had to wash it. No, that's wrong. You know, nobody's perfect. Well, you might be. Superman is. But this isn't about him. <laughs> Thank you, Internet for not making me do all those calculations. My earlier self would have split this video up into two or three sections, so let me know in the comments. Do you like a longer video start to finish? Or would you rather have videos more often? And hit the like button while you're at it. Thanks for coming.